Isometric design is the natural evolution out of flat design which retains its simplicity. By combining flat and 3D design we can produce interesting three dimensional type. I recently touched on this in an older video which I think can be revisited in more detail. My name is Richard Comter, a web design illustrator and in today's video I'll be showing you how to create fun, vibrant, isometric text. Okay, so once you're in the Illustrator, you want to create a new document, 1920 by 1080 pixels, and then set up the three following color swatches. And then you also want to make sure you have Smart Guides enabled by going to View, and then clicking Smart Guides. And you want to also make sure you have the Snap to Point option ticked. With all that said and done, the first thing we need to do is set up our isometric grid. And to do that, you want to go to the line segment tool and select the rectangular grid tool and then just click anywhere within the artboard and then create a grid size of 100 by 100 with 100 horizontal dividers and 100 vertical dividers and then just press OK. With the rectangle selected, we need to go to the transform panel. If you haven't got the transform panel open, you can go to window and then select transform and we want to select the horizontal value and change this to 86.606% and then press enter and this horizontal value has to be 86.606 and then the two options underneath so the shear we need to change that to minus 30 and then the rotate option we want to enter 30 degrees once you've committed the changes horizontally and vertically center the grid and then scale the grid up as big as the artboard once the grid fills the artboard add a black 0 0.2 point stroke and then zoom into the left side of the grid select the line segment tool and just draw one vertical line on the left corner. Next, select the line, hold down the Alt key to drag a duplicate and move the duplicate line over to the next corner of the first square and then let go. And then what we can do is if we zoom out so we can see the full grid and then just press Ctrl D on the keyboard until the line is duplicated all the way across to the opposite end of the grid. Keep the last line selected and then go to select same shape and this will select all the lines that we've just created and then if you select the middle angle point hold down the alt key and just drag up so the lines exceed past the artboard and then press Ctrl A on the keyboard to select everything and then go to Object Group and then select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle the same size as the artboard horizontally and vertically center and then select the rectangle we just created along with the lines and the grid right click and go to make clipping mask and then what that will do is it will crop our isometric grid to the same size as our artboard with the isometric grid now created what we can do is just lock that into place to stop it from moving and then we can start adding our text for the isometric effect so using the type tool press T on the keyboard and just type out your desired word I always find that using a nice extra bold font works best. Increase the font size as big as you can and then right click and go to create outlines. And while the text is still selected we just want to make sure we ungroup each character by going to object ungroup and then we can select each letter individually ready for applying our 3D extrude and bevel effect. 
before we apply the 3D isometric effect, we just want to make a selection around all of our text and just change the colour to something which is a bit more visible. So I'll select the purple colour from our swatches and then you want to select the first character and then go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. Within the 3D Extrude and Bevel options, under the Position drop down, we have access to four isometric presets. So we've got a left, right, top and bottom. And as long as you've got the preview option ticked, we can just preview what each one of these effects looks like. So with the four, first four characters of the word that I'm using, I'm gonna have the first four set to the isometric right option, and then I'm gonna have the last three using the isometric left option but you're free to do whatever you want so you could randomize each character and have left right and perhaps some top positions it's entirely up to yourself so i'll apply the right option to the first character and i'm just going to increase the extrude depth to about 80 just to make it that little bit more thicker so once you've done your first character, just press OK and then continue and add the rest of the isometric options to each one of the other characters. And once you've applied the 3D extrude effects to each one of your characters, make a selection around all of them and go to Object, Expand Appearance and then without deselecting the text go to object ungroup and repeat this three times until each character is ungrouped and you can select each individual face independently now before we start adding any color if you're using a lot of letters that have curves like this letter c you can see that it's made up of a number of individual shapes so what we want to do is just go through all the characters with rounded faces and just select and then using the pathfinder tool just hit the unite option if you don't see the pathfinder tool go to window and then scroll down to pathfinder or you could use the shift control f9 shortcut key so you just want to go through each letter Holding down the shift key, select the multiple faces and then select the Unite option. Once you've merged the curved shapes, we can start now adding some colour to our individual letters. So using the three colours that we set out in the beginning, we just want to select some individual faces and then just colour these with our random colours. So I'll do a few of the sides yellow, make some of the sides pink, I'll leave some of the sides purple and but then the front faces I'm going to turn white. Next to make the text stand out I'm just going to select the rectangle tool, click anywhere on the artboard and then I'm going to create rectangle the same size as our artboard and then I'm going to color this in the purple color vertically and horizontally center it and then right click and go to arrange send to back and this is just so I can see what we're editing with the text and then I'm just going to lock that background layer in place to stop it from moving just to add a bit more detail to the some of the characters, so the characters with the rounded faces, I'm actually going to turn the solid colour into a gradient. So selecting the face, selecting the gradient option, and then I'm just going to use a combination of the purple and pink colour. And then using the gradient tool, I'm just going to adjust the angle 
and then I'm going to repeat this for each curve. Once you're happy with the colours, next you want to drag a selection around each individual letter. So make a selection around the first letter and then go to Object Group and then you want to repeat this for each letter, grouping them individually so we can change their positions in the next step. Now once all the letters are individually grouped, we can start positioning each letter using our isometric grid. So select the first letter and then using the direct selection tool drag the most bottom corner point so it lines up with the isometric grid again it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect and then select the next letter and then position that next to it using the control open square bracket shortcut we can send the letters or arrange the letters behind one another and then you just want to keep moving each letter into its position using the grid as a reference Once all your letters in position, make a selection around all of them and then go to Object Group and then just horizontally and vertically align all the artwork into the centre. Once the artwork's in the centre, just zoom in and then drag all of the artwork over to the nearest isometric point and this will just help us when we add the details to each character in the next few steps. Now with everything in place we can start adding some of the finer details and this is where the isometric designs come into a league of their own because you can add some really good details. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pen tool and then using the isometric grid reference I'm just going to create a simple isometric square and then I'm going to colour this with the purple colour and then selecting that square hold down the alt key and then just drag a duplicate to the thickness that you want the small box to be and then using the pen tool we can just join up the corners once you've drawn the faces of the square we just want to fill these faces with different colors so I'll use the pink for the top and then I'll use a white for the side and then make a selection around the faces and go to object group and then holding down the shift and alt key we can just resize this and make it smaller and then we can position this anywhere over the top of our text or one of the faces of our text to create some kind of extruding panel again we can add wires or we can do basically anything just let your imagination run wild Within isometric design, obviously you don't have to stick with squares, we can also make um, ellipses or circles and the easiest way to do that is using the direct selection tool, select the front face of the object, go to edit, copy and then go to edit, paste in place, I'm just going to change the colour from a purple to a yellow and then go to effect, stylize rounded corners then just set the corner radius to something really high like 500 press ok and then that square is transformed into an isometric circle and then we can just holding down the alt and the shift key we can resize the shape from the center to make it look like a little hole or a wire whatever you need it to be and then if we just add the ellipse to the group so selecting both shapes and go to object group we can also copy the whole group and then paste the square onto another letter and if we just change the face to make it stand out we can now repeat the last couple of steps for the opposite faces 
So again, using the pen tool, using the isometric grid as a reference, we can make another square, duplicate the face, moving it backwards, and then selecting the pen tool and then just joining the faces together. Make a selection around the object and then go to object group. Hold down the shift key and alt key and then make it smaller if you want to. And then position that over the top of our main text face. And then we can just duplicate this onto our remaining text. And then to make the little holes again, select the face, go to edit copy, edit paste in place and then go to effect and then apply the round corner option to make them round and then we can just resize these down again. So they look like holes. Next using the pen tool we can start creating the wires that are coming out from each letter and going into the others so select the pen tool with no solid fill and then change the stroke to something which stands out assuming you've got smart guide selected you should be able to find the perfect center of the ellipse add an anchor point and then using the isometric grid as a reference create first one which is coming out and then from within the stroke panel if you don't see the stroke panel just go to window stroke or use the control F10 shortcut and we just want to change the ends to a round cap and a round join and that creates a nice rounded end and then it's just a case of using the pen tool following the isometric grid and then join the stroke together. And of course if you need to make any adjustments you can just select the anchor points and just move them in line with the isometric grid. And once you've joined all the objects together, you should have something which looks like this. You don't have to have all these strokes going the same way. You can have them going up and across, similar to um, my original example, but you can join them up wherever you want. And then finally, again, using the pen tool, we can create some isometric squares just by following the isometric grid. And then we can just duplicate these just to add a bit of a pattern and just to add a bit more depth to the artwork. And then we can just randomly colour these in different colours. Finally, make a selection around everything and then go to Object Group, horizontally in centre the artwork and then just hide the isometric grid. That's it for this week. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to stick around for more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one.